Hey everybody, welcome back to RV Living Yet. Today, we're gonna start our solar journey on our new, to us, fifth wheel. If you caught our last video, uh, we just picked up this guy. It's a used 2013 Cedar Creek uh, Silverback, 33RL. And our past travel trailer did have some minor solar on it. We had 400 rene 100 watt Renogy panels on the roof and um, we didn't have an inverter or anything. We just used the 12 volt side. We had a one Battleborn battery and ran our water pumps, our lights. Uh, we did have just a little little uh, inverter that you'd use in your car just to run some real basic stuff and we bought 12 volt chargers for our laptops and our cell phones and all that stuff ran off 12 volts. So for the time being it was pretty good. It just ran the basic stuff. We didn't do anything fancy with it and if we really needed some extra power we fired up our inverter generator. We have a Champion 3500 watt and that ran our air conditioner, our coffee pot, things like that. On this guy we want to do it a little bit different however we don't have that monster budget you see a lot of these big time RVers out there have so we're trying to use what we have um, like I said we already have the one Battleborn batteries and if you've been shopping for those guys they're about 950 bucks you can probably find a deal here or there but they add up and some of these guys have six of them in their rigs so do the math we're just not looking to spend that type of money and I'm sure a lot of our viewers aren't either because most of our videos are about free camping um, so we definitely are going to get more batteries uh, eventually we might get one right now so that we have a total of two and I want to have room for up to four as we grow into the system we also think we're going to go with the Victron uh, power multi plus inverter and a lot of the Victron components although we're not going to get the fancy screens and a lot of the gizmos yet because we're just not sponsored and this is all coming out of our own pockets and we want to be able to grow into the system. Um, what I want to do with this video, hopefully a series, is show you guys from the beginning through the end of how to put together a system. And again, I'm not a solar installer. I do have an electrical background, but liability here, we're not <laughs> responsible for anything you do. Uh, but the thought process of how to design a system, where to put your stuff, how to route the cables, um, you know, and how to potentially expand the system in the future. So, follow along as we start from the very beginning, where a lot of the other channels just show you when it's complete or once they already start putting the components in. I'm going to show you the process of me going through this thing, looking for a route from the roof, um, looking for locations for the solar panels, looking for the component equipment, and um, actually designing the system and then piecemealing it, putting it together. So, let's check it out. I think there's really two places to put the equipment. Uh, sizable equipment is the batteries. Like I said, we want to shoot for four ultimately. Right now, we're probably going to just do the two. And the uh, Victron Multi Plus, that thing's pretty big. It's the inverter charger. Um, and then all the, the charge controller. We may just use the Renogy charge controller that we have for now and the 400 watt solar panels. Um, we, we have been talking to a couple solar suppliers and they informed me that I could use my existing panels uh, and then later add more panels but use two different charge controllers so I didn't I wasn't aware of that so maybe you aren't either I was just assuming that you have to use one charge controller granted now you have to run two wires from the roof use two charge controllers um, which are probably gonna be smaller so we're still battling that part uh, do we use what we have now or do we just pony up the money and do everything up front at once but one of the locations that I was considering is underneath here there is what appears to be some space uh, we'd have to cut another hole into this wall here and we could potentially put some batteries back in there um, and maybe get the charge controller in there however it's pretty tight even uh, even if we cut the hole so that's not, I like that option because it doesn't take up any storage space, but I don't like the option because it, um, it's going to be very difficult to get to and we're going to have to cut, cut into the RV a little bit here. So that's one location that I'm considering, that big cavity back there and it's right behind the electrical panel and it's probably going to be where we're going to have to come down with the cables from the roof. So we're going to probably have to get in there anyway one option. The other more popular option for our viewers is right in here and mount all the equipment 
on the backboard up here and then we have a cavity below back in here where we can potentially put the batteries um, but it's going to eat up a lot of our storage space so and we have to still route the cable from the roof all the way here and then route cables back to the electric panel from this location however everything would be accessible right here uh, now this is our 3500 watt inverter generator and before you comment no we do not run it in the compartment I just beefed up some plywood here to store it while we travel and then this guy would come out and it would supplement any power that the solar couldn't couldn't do or if we had a cloudy day and we need to top off the batteries we always have this guy with us um, so right now these are my two options is locating our batteries here's one of the battleborn batteries so you can see they're decent size however they're pretty lightweight and uh, adding four more of these guys so you can imagine how much room you need for that so those are two options and that will probably work itself out as I find out our pathways, start ordering equipment, um, and go from there. And that's just part of that journey of, it's, it's not obvious as where we're gonna put this stuff. So, okay, uh, next step is we gotta look and see how we're gonna get down from the roof. All right, so in our last travel trailer, it was way easier routing the cables from the roof, the solar panels down to the charge controller. Uh, this guy, last time we did it through the back of the fridge, which is pretty easy, pretty common. You take the vent cover off the fridge, there's a cavity, behind the fridge and then it was right there into the electrical panel next to it however our fridge here is on the slide so we definitely can't do that and as you can see the top of the components and even the cabinets over here in the kitchen don't go all the way up to the ceiling so uh, in this main area there's pretty much no place to hide a cable coming down in a cabinet or something like that there is a vent pipe that I noticed on the roof that comes right through here in this. And our electrical panel is right below the storage area. And this is all of our controls. So this is an option, but it's a risky option because most likely there's duct work uh, over this area for the air conditioner. So you definitely don't want to just drill down and be right into your duct work because that's not going to fly. Um, and I really don't want to take this wall cover off, so I may pull this cabinet and see what's in here. But um, I don't see is this is a viable option, again, because I'm looking right at the AC duct. And it looks like it's right in line with for this wall. So In the bedroom, we kind of have the same problems. Uh, I know some people go have gone through the nose. I've pulled a couple of these out and there's just a lot of insulation and pretty much from here forward we're over the the nose of the RV so it's not a direct shot down. You just have to come down and run route it over and then get into the basement area. So I'm kind of eliminating this part because I don't want to open a can of worms and I don't want my access point in the front of the RV where it's potential to hit trees and so forth. So the bedroom's pretty much out. So in the bathroom, I've identified two spots. There is a vent that comes, I can see the skylight from up top. I can see our fantastic fan. Uh, I know there's a vent for the gray tank that comes through this wall right here. And potentially we could take the shower off the shower mixer off and get look into this wall and see what we have because I know I can look down in the cabinets from the kitchen and see the water lines and the vent coming up into this wall so I know I have access from here down and I think I'm far enough over that there's not going to be any duct work here which will do well I got duct work here so that is also the problem so we uh, we may encounter some duct work here as well but we'll have to explore that a little bit further. The other option was to run on the surface and drill up into this cabinet and come right behind here and drill a hole up through on the surface of this wall and just tuck our wires behind the cabinet going all the way down. Um, 
So these are the fun things about how to route your cables safely and without hitting any infrastructure coming from the roof. And really, really it really just comes down to drilling some holes and hoping for the best. But taking an educated look at your RV and knowing that you have ductwork in the ceiling, you have insulation in the ceiling. So if you drill a hole from the top, you don't want to just run an auger bit through and grab all the insulation and pull it out like cotton candy. Um, you want to really open things up and see what the best route's going to be before you drill those holes. So that's what we're going to do now. that does not look promising. The top they just have a hole with all the cables coming through so there's not a direct shot up to the attic. Uh, and there's really not a lot of room in the wall behind this cabinet where I was hoping there'd be a little bit of a void. So I'm probably not going to use that option. So the other option was that vent pipe behind the shower that goes into under the sink. You can see under the sink there's water lines that go up to the shower. So I'm kind of thinking about routing it with that black PVC pipe and then getting down. This is open under here into the underbelly or into the basement. So that is an option. What I'm doing now is just measuring the where the ductwork runs. There's generally two runs along the entire RV that feed these vents and it looks like on center on the side wall we're about 34 inches so um, I don't want to drill on the center of that area right here anywhere through the roof so I'm looking up here we're just going to put my duct right in this area right here makes sense is on the other side of the, the vent um, and then I know I have pipes in this wall so you can actually see where it bellies out there's a, a vent pipe right here that goes all the way down um, so I'm gonna take this off and just see by chance if I can see over here probably not they probably have this framed in but let's take a look That didn't work well. See what I get? Show my thing off. <laughs> what happens when you wave it around like you just don't care? I really don't care. <laughs> Dope. Fingers. Fingers. That would be a negative. find that vent which is probably right here somewhere in the wall. I'll come down next to it. Okay. Alright, we're going on the roof. Thanks, bro. Show you guys what it looks like up there.
All right, here we are up on the roof. So, what I was looking at is, right here is the bathroom. And my thought is, this vent is the one we saw going down to the kitchen. Coming in the wall, one side or the other here, drill a hole down, get into that wall and then snake straight down. The other vents are over there. Those are the ones by the electrical panel. Um, and that's the fan that we just opened up in the, in the bathroom. So that's gonna be a challenge right there. So I'm really thinking that somewhere in this vicinity is gonna be our best option. Um, so we will start drilling once we have some components. All right guys, so that is the, uh, that's the first part is kind of figuring out where all your runs are going to be. Also measuring the locations on your roof that uh, you can actually put the solar panels and not be obstructed by air conditioners and shading and so forth. So we also want access to the slides from the roof, A, to clean them before we leave, and B, sometimes the seals don't pop out all the way, so we've been having to come up here and manually pull them out to keep the rain out. So I don't want to put my um, solar panels right on the edge. I want to be able to service those slides. So those are all things that I'm considering. I don't want to be obstructed by any shadows from the air conditioners. I don't want to impede uh, the antenna usage. Uh, so, and then I also want to maximize the amount of solar I'm pulling out of here per penetration I'm putting in the roof. So I don't want to put 10 hundred watt solar panels up here. I'd rather put, um, you know, four 250s or something like that. Uh, but space is limited so I gotta kind of do those calculations and see which solar panels are going to be the best most output for the size of the spots that I have on this roof so this is all part of the process and I hope you guys are following along uh, check us out on the next episode where we actually start drilling holes and hopefully get some wire ordered and um, I'll show you our load calculations that we're going to do and figure out exactly what we need and the system that we're going to ultimately build toward maybe not right now but get it ready for that point Definitely like and subscribe the video if you got some benefits and tune in for the next one. Thanks guys.